And it is 11.05. Um, I will go ahead and start by welcoming everyone that is here. Um, welcome back to our afternoon sessions. Um, we are here for session 3.1, Keeping Clue, an unsuccessful attempt at adapting a beloved library tradition for the virtual world. Um, a note to all our attendees, we are recording this, this session. Live transcription is on. If you would like to adjust whether or not that shows up, um, you can do so under the live transcription icon um, and toggling your selection there. Kaylin Blunt and I are co-moderating this session. Um, if you have questions during the session, there will be a time reserved for answering those at the end of the presentation. And if you would like to submit a question anonymously, you can um, chat directly to Kaylin or I, and we will present the question to our um, to our panel. That said, I'm going to turn this over to our group of presenters so that they can introduce themselves. Thanks, Amy. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. And yes, we're going to get started with some brief introductions. My name is Caitlin Ander, and I am the manager of the Media and Design Center in the Undergraduate Library at UNC Chapel Hill. I've co-chaired the Clue Planning Committee with Allison Barnett since 2016, approximately. It's been so long now that it feels like I've really lost track of time. Uh, this picture of me is from the first Clue game I participated in back in 2014, where I acted as a room monitor or more excitingly, a special investigation agent. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Allison Barnett. I am. I work for the North Carolina Collection and Wilson Special Collections Library. You can see in this picture, I am in my normal casual Friday garb. Um, I am what the lifer call, or what the committee calls a lifer, as is Caitlin. Um, we've both been involved in the game since the very beginning. I was the original Miss Scarlet and then joined the committee right after. Um, and we was lucky enough to, um, once I got asked to be coach, to be a chair, to uh, talk Caitlin into being chair of the committee with me. And we've lived happily ever after since. Yes. Hello, I am the other Allison, Allison Rubidich. I'm a second year's master's student in the School of Information and Library Science at UNC Chapel Hill. I'm a library intern for the EPA and the data visualization and reporting intern at Duke. I've been on the Clue Planning Committee since my senior year of undergrad, and they've just kind of held on to me since then. And this is a picture of me from when I was an undergraduate player in the Clue game in spring 2019. So we know that many of you may be familiar with Clue on some level. Uh, but we wanted to start with a bit of background to make sure everyone has a basic understanding of the program. And of course, to sing its praises a bit, because even though three of us are clearly biased, we really, really love this event. So in the before times, there was Lewis Round Wilson Library. Wilson Library has been around for many years, of course, but our story starts back about 10 years ago, when a former staff member named Becky Garrett, who had a background in play therapy, suggested that it might be fun to develop a live version of the Clue board game. Now, as the Special Collections Library, Wilson was, and honestly still is, often overlooked by undergrads who thought that it was intimidating or even scary. So with Becky's suggestion in mind, a small group of library staff who were particularly interested in student engagement started to think about ways that holding a live action game might counteract some of those ideas. They wanted to create a fun way for students to explore Wilson spaces, interact with its collections and meet library staff members, all in the hopes of showing students that, like the UL in Davis, Wilson was their library too. After some initial meetings and lots of planning, Wilson Library Presents Clue, a live action mystery event was born. Our version of Clue has always been only loosely based on the classic board game. In its earliest iteration, the game was more like a scavenger hunt, but has since evolved into a full-on ghost hunt. In the current version, or the version last played before COVID, and that we hope to reinstate this fall, 
Players move throughout Wilson Library, interrogating library staff who are dressed up as suspects inspired by the original Clue characters and interacting with collection items to solve a series of puzzles and logic problems that will reveal to them the three-part solution consisting of who, where, and what. We haven't held a live game since October of 2019, but pre-pandemic, we held two games each year, one around Halloween and the other in the spring, usually in late March or early April. The entire event lasts about two and a half hours and includes player check-in, a pre-game introduction, gameplay, dinner and a short film, a post-game answer reveal, and the presentation of prizes to the top three teams. We generally max out registration at 17 teams, mostly based on the size of our public spaces in Wilson Library. Each team has four to five players for a total of about 80 players per game. The game also requires most of the planning committee to be at the event, as well as an additional 16 library staff volunteers to play suspects and act as activity monitors. Most elements of active gameplay, including instructions, navigation, and answer submission happen in an amazing custom web app that was designed by one of our former committee members. This element has really helped with player engagement as most students feel much more comfortable utilizing their phones, surprising I know, uh, than carrying around a binder full of paper, which was what happened in the first few iterations of the game. After its introduction in 2012, Clue quickly increased in popularity. Just a few years after we started offering this event, game registration was filling up within two or three days of opening. Once registration was full, teams could also sign up to be added to a wait list. For most games, our wait list ended up being just as long, if not longer, than our registered teams list. In 2015, the game even ended up on BuzzFeed's 100 things that must be on your UNC bucket list, which as you can imagine, was pretty exciting for all of us. One of the main reasons for Clue's success has been its continued evolution to align with player feedback, which we gather after every game via a player survey. Which brings us around to the Clue Planning Committee, which is the group responsible for collecting all that player feedback and then working its magic, AKA working extremely hard to continually make the game better. The committee generally consists of eight to 15 people from across the UNC Chapel Hill University libraries. We try to maintain a mix of permanent staff, graduate student staff, and occasionally even undergraduate student staff, case in point, Allison R. They worked in the music library as an undergrad and then joined the committee after playing the game their junior year. They continue to serve during their two years in grad school and we really don't wanna let them go, but that's another point. Um, having student perspective and input is invaluable, especially when it comes to making changes to improve the player experience. I know I've already admitted to being biased, but I have to tell y'all that working on this committee really is the best. We never take ourselves too seriously. We fully embrace the campiness of the game, and we literally can't make it through a committee meeting without at least one reference to 80s or 90s pop culture. When planning new game elements, no idea is too outlandish for us to consider. And we thrive off starting with really big ideas and then working those back into something we can actually pull off. The committee spends about two months prior to each game handling the logistics of that game, but devotes the rest of the year to brainstorming, testing, and implementing changes. We also pride ourselves on over planning as will become abundantly clear later in this presentation. As much as possible, we wanna make sure we thought through and planned for every contingency that may pop up. So we were in the midst of some of this classic over planning, adding some new elements to the game and just days away from opening registration for our spring 2020 game and then COVID. You all know the scenario, everything came to a halt. No in-person events, total shutdown, and by the way, get off campus. So now what? How do we keep up the momentum of our live action game without the in-person part? Well, we did what we do best and we got to brainstorming. 
Per our usual, we started big and then we got realistic. First, we thought we could just hold the entire game virtually. No problem, we could do that. Started discussing what all that would take and quickly we all got headaches and realized that was not going to happen. So the next idea, how about a virtual library scavenger hunt? This way students would still get to explore the library and its materials, hopefully making them more comfortable coming to Wilson Library once that was allowed again. Um, one of our committee members at the time was big into Minecraft and wanted to make a virtual Wilson Library world where students would explore the library with avatars. Despite the committee's shared excitement over just how absolutely cool this would be, we quickly realized it could not be done in the few months time that we had. So we went back to the drawing board and got realistic. We were in the height of the pandemic and everyone's mental bandwidth was starting to lag. We needed an event we could produce quickly and easily with as little drain on committee members as possible. We decided on a virtual clue movie watch party. Watch parties were all the hotness at the time, so we figured it couldn't be that difficult to pull off. So watch party, we got this. All we have to do is set up a virtual way to watch the movie, advertise it to students, then push play. Done and done. We can run the live game twice a year. This was going to be a piece of cake. We got the ball rolling with logistics. We had the usual discussions about what days of the week and what times would garner the most attendance and then compared that to when committee members were available. We would set up the registration on UNC's event website so we'd know if people would actually show up. And then we would email everyone and every student group we could possibly think of that might have the slightest interest in attending our event. So we were off to a good start at this point. Logistics done. Now, how do we get students to attend? All right, step one, it's free. Students like free stuff. Step two, more free stuff. Unfortunately, we could not use the number one time-tested surefire student bait, free food. In the live game, we offered dinner complete with dietary restriction options, drinks, and dessert. We'd have wine going all the way back, grabbing pizza from IP3, which is really good pizza if you're ever in Chapel Hill and looking for a place. Uh, but having free food, <laughs> it was not going to work with a virtual event, clearly. Instead, we figured we'd do random giveaways throughout the watch party with themed prizes and mail those prizes to winners. We offered limited edition Clue and Wilson Library game buttons that you typically only get by playing the live game. We had postcard packs, which were replicas of iconic Chapel Hill postcards from our collections in Wilson Library. And 80s themed movie snack packs complete with microwave popcorn and popular 80s era candies. So we were able to find a way to sneak some free food in there. And now we got the incentives taken care of. We can check that off the list. Still doing good. Now, how exactly do we make all this happen? And how do we tie this virtual event back to our live action clue game? We didn't want this to seem like an unrelated one-off event. After all, we wanted to make sure students knew that Clue and Wilson, and Wilson Library would ret return. We don't know when, but we will be back. So let's tie all this back to our live action clue game. We decided it would be cool to do a live intro for the event, masterpiece theater style, with our host flanked by an ornate background, maybe a crackling fire and a glass of wine, what have you. Setting the tone for the night's festivities with an over the top campy intro. Over the years, we've had several repeat staff volunteers that either reprise their character roles each game or work their way through depicting each character, putting their own spin on their portrayal. We contacted a few of our most frequent flyers and Sonoy Nakasone enthusiastically took on this new role and ran with it. If you know Sonoy, this should not surprise you. Sonoy portrayed an eccentric ghostly character named Jim Gould. The name is derived from Gimgul, an iconic piece of campus mythology that plays a role in our live game. Jim Gul would welcome attendees, explain why we were hosting a Clue movie watch party, and lay out how the night would work. Sonoy came up with this whole thing herself. The background, um, 
the way she's presented in the screen, it was, it was pretty magnificent. We also wanted to keep folks engrossed and involved throughout the event like we do with the live game. Inspired by VH1 pop-up video, we settled on having a live chat where our event host, Jim Gould, could drop clue trivia and viewers could chat back and forth as if they were watching the movie with a group of friends in their living room. If you're not familiar with VH1 pop-up video, we are happy to address that in the Q&A. To do all this, we needed a platform where we could have a live intro, show the movie to everyone in attendance, and at the same time, allow for group discussion. Zoom, the answer to all work-related pandemic problems. Like we said, this was going to be a piece of cake, or so we thought. This is when it's beneficial to have students on your committee. They keep you up to date on the current pulse of the student body. They provide a new generation to pass your outdated pop culture knowledge to. And they tactfully tell you in detail how your well-crafted, thoroughly thought out plans are not going to work. Yeah, I definitely have learned a lot about pop culture from this committee. <laughs> Uh, and as we all spent 2020 discovering, Zoom is not so great at sharing streaming video. There are settings that can improve this, but frankly, if we had come up with the workaround for the computational problem of sharing streaming video, we would all be working for Twitch and not UNC. We also realize that movie licensing gets super complicated when you are streaming a movie for a group of people rather than individuals. So for both of these reasons, everyone was going to have to be watching the movie on their own computers. We just had to figure out what that looked like and how we could make it fun. <coughs> Excuse me. We decided to use three separate platforms for the event. First, students would join a Zoom call where they would receive information on the event and watch a cute introduction skit. Then in the Zoom call, we would give them the link to the movie itself in the library catalog, which they would access with their UNC login. Finally, we would give them the link to a Discord server where the fun chat and trivia part would take place. Discord is an instant messaging platform that was heavily marketing itself to college students in fall 2020 <coughs> as an alternative to in-person socialization. We were hoping that because of that, many students would already have Discord accounts and would have less work to do before the movie started. Just as an example, my LIS cohort started multiple Discord servers in fall 2020 as a way to get to know each other during remote learning. Now, there were some barriers to this plan. We found that three platforms with two sets of login credentials created an exponential number of links that students needed to click. And as we mentioned, we were kind of worried about them coming in the first place. It was 2020. We didn't have COVID-19 vaccines yet. Students were fully online all day, every day, resulting in Zoom burnout. Oh, and our event took place six days before the 2020 presidential election. So we were not doing great, and we were competing against many other claims on students' time. On top of that, it felt like every week brought new articles on Zoom bombing, a form of viral internet hate where outside parties would crash Zoom events by broadcasting pornographic or racist content. We were concerned about even invited members behaving badly in the chat because the internet had never felt more poisonous than it did in 2020. It left us with the questions, how are we going to get students to participate? And how would we keep them safe once they were there? <coughs> Excuse me. To address these issues, we built in some security protocols to our Discord. First, it was private, so only people with the link could access it, and you could only get the link by entering the Zoom room with your UNC login. Then, when guests entered the Discord, they landed on a page where they had to read our chat guidelines. We used a popular Discord bot called Reaction Roles so that guests only got access to the party when they gave a thumbs up to our chat guidelines. Finally, we had three committee members constantly moderating chat who were trained to identify and remove participants breaking our chat guidelines. I was one of these moderators, and even though we had a practice screening and the actual watch party, I have technically never seen the movie Clue because I was watching chat the whole time. <coughs> and here is a screenshot of our chat guidelines. We had to click a thumbs up before you could access the party, and we tried to keep it thematically appropriate by starting it with, don't be a ghoul. <clears throat> to engage students while the movie played, our host, Jim Gould, posted trivia about the film we were all watching. Here's the first piece of trivia we posted. 
The clue board game was invented by a couple, Anthony and Elva Pratt, during World War II to stave off boredom during air raids. They based the game on murder mystery games they had played, as well as popular detective fiction novels of the era. In typical clue spirit, we got carried away and accidentally wrote more trivia than one person could possibly post. To address this, we had two committee members with identical usernames and profile pics posting trivia to give the illusion of a single host. We also ran into the problem that people were getting out of sync because they were watching separately. To address this, another committee member gave a countdown to the start of the movie and then dropped timestamps throughout the event. To recap, we went from a watch party being a low maintenance virtual solution where all we had to do was advertise to students, send a Zoom link and push play to a night that involved three platforms, 12 committee members handling six different roles, four links to all the virtual stuff required to access the event, 36 pieces of Clue movie trivia being dropped by two different gym ghouls, one staff volunteer performing our live intro as Jim Gould, one two-page event timeline to keep us on track, and a partridge in a pear tree in the library with the lead pipe. So at this point, you're probably wondering, but how did the event actually go? Well, let's start with the good. On the day of the event, we had more than 30 students registered to attend. We thought that was pretty good. And the event itself came off without a hitch. Our over planning covered all contingencies and we amazingly didn't experience any unforeseen or inexplicable technological issues. Even though on the back end, there were times that felt extremely chaotic. Most importantly, everyone involved, both attendees and committee members had a great time. There was continuous and lively chatter in Discord and lots of laughter, at least according to the on-screen emojis. In the survey we sent out after the watch party, one attendee mentioned that it would be great to do this event again. But there was also the less good. Even though more than 30 people had registered for the event, in the end, only eight people actually showed up for the watch party. Of those eight, two were full-time library staff. Shout out to our university librarian for being one of them. Three were student library staff, and multiple had been personally recruited by Alice and R. So that brings us around to the ultimate question. Was it worth it? Unfortunately not. Ultimately, the time put into planning and executing this event was not worth its limited impact. Though our comm folks told us, and you may have heard in a previous session today, Eight attendees was actually a decent number for a virtual event during this time. We were ultimately disappointed because in the end, we didn't achieve our most important goal, which is to maintain visibility and student interest in the game. But there's always a but. We certainly don't regret doing it. For the committee, the event was a great way to keep us connected and keep our creative juices flowing, especially during a time in the pandemic when some of us did have more time to devote to working on a new project. And of course, we really, we all had a blast. <laughs> um, the results also haven't discouraged us from continuing to try new ideas. Coming up next month, we're partnering with the Carolina Union Activities Board or QAB to host an in-person screening of the Clue movie on UNC's campus. We're extremely excited that this event will not involve Zoom in any way, shape or form. And also really excited that we'll be able to provide free food again in the form of fresh popcorn. We're also very hopeful, keeping our fingers crossed that we'll be able to do our first live game in three years this coming October. So we'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'd love to answer any questions or hear any comments you may have please feel free to put your questions or comments in the chat and we're trying to meet yourself and ask. Thank you.
Did I see some hands up? I think Dana and Barbara. <clears throat> I was actually I was just, just applauding. applauding. Yeah, yeah same, oh, same cool. Barbara. <laughs> I will say as a um, committee member and attendee of the viewing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, I think the event worked really well as kind of a staff development or staff social. Um, so I think a similar event in the future would uh, would do well as, as kind of like a, a staff only event rather than a student facing outreach um, program. We did, we didn't we only briefly mentioned it here, but we did have um, a test run where we had staff members that signed up to watch the movie. It's for us to practice all the timing and the tech that was going on in the background. Um, and we had, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, I, I don't remember how many more than came to the actual event. Uh, but we had a load of fun doing that. Um, the chatter was quite lively and we were all just making ourselves laugh. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a great point, Dana. It would be a fun thing to do in the future, yeah, with staff. And I think, um, let's see, Gregory Hill put, could you provide some, <laughs> some examples of the 80s and 90s pop cultural references used? I mean, I put them through the slides if you noticed any of those. <laughs> um, Arnold Schwarzenegger did make a, uh, an appearance in this. Uh, I don't know, Caitlin, can you think of anything that, Allison, anything that comes up regularly? Uh, I, yeah, Tim Curry. I mean, we talk one. <laughs> and what's, I have been made to watch this music video of Tim Curry so many times. Allison, Caitlin, which one is that? Amy Fader, do you care? To, I know, it's like, where's Amy? <laughs> to, uh, it's called Anything Can Happen on Halloween. It's from a TV movie called The Worst Witch, starring Tim Curry. Really good. Play, Amy should... Plays like the warlock head of a school or something. Yeah. Yeah, we have it at the MGC. You should come and check it. Amy, you should drop the link in the in the chat just in case anybody wants to see this fantastic right. piece of film. But we, we do say Tim Curry is our patron saint of Clue. Naturally. There have even been threats of putting together a team where all of the characters are dressed up as Tim Curry characters from different movies. <laughs> yes. And that's actually where Sonoy, when she was doing the Jim Ghoul character in the live uh, Zoom intro, she was taking, trying to perfect her Tim Curry voice um, and doing a mixture from him and Clue and him also as, what was it, Frankfurter in? In Rocky Horror, yeah. Rocky Thank Horror, you. Yeah. You're the movie I'm completely forgetting. We had another question about how we've updated the roles in Clue over time. It's a great question. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, they've gone through a variety of changes. I think that the first update we made, I'm trying to think if I'm going back far enough. I mean, I think we initially changed their uh, words, their superlatives or their, we stopped using. They're gender neutral now. Mr. and Mrs. as their titles um, and gave them more like profession titles. So Miss Scarlet became Senator Scarlet and Miss White is now Dr. White. Dr. White, yes. Still have um, Professor Plum. Exactly, still Professor. I mean, it was Reverend one of those Green. things where Reverend Green. Right. Yeah. The traditionally male characters seem to already have those titles. So um, we wanted to kind of yeah make that true of all the characters and then yes at some point we also updated all of the testimony or scripts they're reading in the game to be gender neutral so that anyone could play any of those parts um which i think has been nice and also i mean made it actually kind of easier i think to recruit people to those roles <laughs> Uh, Dana included a crucial contribu contribution in the chat that I would like to read out loud, namely that in terms of 80s and 90s references, we did uh, heavily reference a UNC student created soap opera called General College, possibly the greatest cinematic map. Oh, General College? General Hospital? Um, yeah, possibly the greatest cinematic masterpiece of our time behind Clue. 
Um, it's very neat. Um, my big takeaway from the clue committee is probably that actually. <laughs> and we've actually figured out a way to incorporate it into a new part of the game that we're updating for hopefully the fall <laughs> when we can give back. Has we've anybody also, seen the tambourine? I was just gonna say we've also added some non-suspect chromatic characters. Um or, or adding more like orchid and um <coughs> gray and but I'm not part of this presentation. The Prince Center should talk. <laughs> Barbara is one of our long-standing committee members as well. Um <clears throat> and has played several of the characters herself. Uh we do try to be as inclusive and ex as accessible as possible um, <clears throat> and try to really appeal to the student population. I think Caitlin mentioned earlier that um, we did begin with paper notebooks uh, and three ring binders that each team would run around with and when it was really not green it was a lot of stuff we had to recycle afterward um, but it was clunky and took a whole bunch of time and then we had a previous um, committee member named Luke Eshelman, um, who created this incredible web app. It's just, it's beautiful. <laughs> and it completely revolutionized the game. We can do so much more now. And the students really get into it a lot more um, with that app. And we've got some worst, worst witch links over here. True library and fashion. Good job. We're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna give you the context and give you the, give you the links. Looking to see if anybody's got hands up that we're missing. Yeah. And we also, <clears throat> I will just say that Clue is very much, um, it's everybody. <laughs> All of the, everybody in the library system kind of helps with this. Um, we put out a call for volunteers before each game. And we have so many people that come and help us with the game. I don't even remember how many people we have to have on hand each time. It might be, what, like 20 volunteers outside of the committee members. Um, so it's it's a big one <laughs> um, that everybody gets into and we have a lot of fun with. So it's really nice to get that collaborative feeling. Um, it feels like Wilson or, or that Clue is the libraries and everybody gets to partake in that. Um, and then we get to work with staff members we may never have otherwise really gotten to work with because um, they come from all across campus. Um, <clears throat> but the one, the one downside to that is staff really, really want to play the clue game. <laughs> and we've yet to figure out a way to do that without having the staff that we need to staff the game. <laughs> so that is forever on the back burner and something that we're always trying to think about. And maybe one of these years we will figure it out. <laughs> we had a comment, let's see, I really appreciate this as a model of providing play interaction and for demystifying the spaces that students may not feel as comfortable in. Thank you. That is our whole goal. That, that's really nice of you to say. Yeah, and I can testify to that firsthand that um, I worked in Wilson Library and I had still never gone into most of it until I played Clue for the first time. It's really hard to feel like you don't belong in a space when you're actively hunting a ghost. <laughs> And that was another thing we were trying to do, um, issue we were trying to address was we are close stacks library being special collections. Um, and our stacks are such a, I don't know, really cool part of our library. Um, and this used to be, Wilson Library was the main campus library. It was built like back in 1929. Um, so a lot of alumni that come back remember when they could go in the stacks and sit in the carols. Um, and now they cannot. And we wanted the students to still be able to see, look, we actually do have books and things here. You just can't get back to see them, but we're more than happy to bring them out for you. Um, so we have a little uh, 
movie that we show at the end uh, while everybody's eating and we're tallying results um, that gives a chance to get a little bit of the behind the scenes and the stacks in a very campy over the top way. Yeah. Still fits perfectly with the theme. And it's actually a student produced film, which is another fun way to connect to students because yeah. you know, it's done by their peers or at least their peers a while ago. <laughs> yeah, students that have never been on the committee, but they worked in Wilson Library and then had friends that would come help. So that was, yeah. that was really cool. Uh, Allison, there's another question. Is this event documented in any way in the university archives as part of student life at UNC? I actually don't know the answer to that. Not that I know of. And if Emily Jack is here and has another answer to that, Emily is one of the originators of Clue um, and a lifer. Um, but this being a library run of it, it is very well documented on our end. <laughs> I actually think if I could just chime in, I think that some of the early, like maybe the very first iteration way back in 2012, um, back when there was a lot of paper that some of those pieces are, are indeed in the university archives. Um, however, now that everything is on a, on an app, like there's not really as much to, to physically like transfer to the archives. Oh, the, <clears throat> So Stephanie uh, has a question about how many people attended in the before times. Um, it varied. We have greatly increased the number of students that we can have because it was getting more and more popular and we wanted to make this as accessible as possible to as many as possible. Um, so now I think we cap out at around 80 because that's all we can physically squeeze into the room where we start the game and start the presentation <laughs> to get it all going. Um, it's really tight and we cannot put anybody else in there without probably going over the fire <laughs> martial limit. Yeah, and just to illustrate with an anecdote how hard it is to get uh, a team into Clue, just from how many people want to take it. Uh, when the year that I was a player in it, my team only got a spot because I had the flu that day. So I was just home in bed refreshing my computer, uh, waiting for like the Clue to open so we could sign up. Yeah, we were getting, there was one game where we had a long enough wait list to fill the next three games just from the wait list. We were, we brag about that one quite a bit. Yeah. And I remember one year um, there were complaints that the sign up didn't go live immediately at 9 a.m. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They called us out real fast on that. If that and was yeah, my year, just saying. <laughs> It's all about Allison Ard. She makes sure that we stay successful. They make exactly. sure we stay successful. Yeah. Yes. It is hard to feel disconnected from Wilson when you're in there chasing a ghost. Exactly. Allison is very correct about that. And then Zachary was uh, making more of a point about the possibility of institutional knowledge dropping away. Um, we've if you could see the backside of how we <laughs> document and save every last little thing, um, not so worried about that. And also uh, the passion that goes into this committee and the people that are on it. Um, there's several of us that are lifers. There's several people that served for four to five years. I mean, I'm just now realizing we're we're in a decade. <laughs> we've been going for 10 years. When Emily said we've been doing this from 2012. Um, so then we always start uh, in our committee year with a like rundown for all the new people, but then it's also a refresher for all the people that have been there. And we've really broken down the committee so that each person takes on a specific role and tasks and becomes very takes ownership of their part and becomes really good at it. So I know, I don't know if I could do registration myself, but thank goodness we still have Dana Durbin around. <laughs> and I will throw in here real quick, uh, and Dana's put up something. Um, if anyone's interested, you can go to our website, clue.unc.edu and see photos from all of the past games um, and get a little bit of an idea of what it's like. 
That was fantastic, y'all. Very, um, very fun stuff, good information, really well-documented tale of the experience. Um, and I want to thank everybody for coming today. And thank you guys for presenting. And that's it. We're at time. Thanks, Amy. Thank you and thanks all everyone so much for coming. for coming and listening. Thank you all.